broadcasting to everyone. Back in the world. Back in the world. There are seven acknowledged wonders of the world, and you are about to be turned on by the eighth, with the Picasso of Soul, the life or day mark of Internet Radio. Ladies and gentlemen, get ready because suspense has arrived. Hello and welcome to Suspense 2020 Visual Radio. The look, the sound, and the excitement of future radio. And welcome to Inner View. On today's program, it's going to be hot because we've got the opportunity to have one of the most prolific gospel artists in the ATL right here on Suspense 2020. She goes by the name of Globy. Her name is Gloria Pope, a phenomenal songstress. She's a writer, producer with two Dove Productions, and she's right here. Without further ado, give it up for Globy. What's going on, Globy? Oh, welcome, welcome to the Suspense 2020 Visual Radio Program. Globy, in case the audience don't know about what it is that you're doing with your gospel music, can you tell us about this new album? I've heard it, and I've had a clear privilege of hearing it. Uh, Child of a King, you wrote it, you produced it. Tell the audience about that in regards to what you're doing to market that. And why did you write Child of a King? What does it mean? Well, Child of a King is this uh, expression that I would like to let the world know that I am royalty, heir to the throne of grace. You know, so that's why I wrote that song. It's what does it do for your soul to know that in regards to, especially being a gospel artist right now, uh, gospel music has become so therapeutic anymore because it's saying something. It's a message that's coming to the spirit. What is that like for you as a writer to to write such a song? And what are you, uh, are you actively pursuing this thing with music because you're an evangelist? And we'll talk about that and expound upon that a little bit more a little later. But what are you doing right now in regards to your music production company with Two Dove Productions? Well, um, we're in the process of, um, we're going to relocate soon, but we're, um, what we have been doing is helping a lot of people get their demos together, um, people that's, trying, that's seeking um, exposure and distribution. We're trying to help um, them to package their demos, um, get their copyrights and stuff in order. So that's the things that we've been doing and not charge them a whole lot of money to get it done, but just trying to, you know, assist them. Well, you, you mentioned the fact in regards to not only being a, a, a writer, but being having your own production facility. Just how important is it right now in today's time in regards to you? We're doing secular music before. How important, how imperative, because you, you have to take into consideration a lot of children listening to the music. What, is, what has made you go from secular to, to the gospel end other than the change in your life spiritually? What is that trans, you know, well, what has that been like? First of all, gospel has always been in me. And even my parents, my grandmother, all of them sang gospel. So during the time that I was coming up, we always had to sing. We had to go to church. We had to do all those different things And as uh, far as uh, pre them preparing us to, to be able to project uh, music in, in the gospel arena. So when, even though I went out into the secular world, it was just, you know, something to get my, my, my feet wet in, you know. It, was, it just trained me to be able to project my gospel, especially when the, once I got saved. You know, the Holy Spirit was yes. giving me all these different yes. words and all these different yes. things to put together. And it was just even easier for me to do that because I had already experienced what's going on out there in the uh, secular uh, arena. I, I've heard you say many, many times that you're in the world but not of the world. And a lot of your music, mm -hmm. in fact, uh, sums that up all together. What has that experience been like in regards to being in the world and not of it? Because I'm pretty sure you, your music has been influenced by Aretha Franklin, Gladys Knight and the Pips. I mean, Gladys Ooh, Knight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What has that experience been like for you as, a, as an artist? And just how much of this is Globy, the queen of vibrato? Well, well, most of it was, you know, as far as me projecting what like Aretha and all of those did, it was mainly kind of mimicking their style. I love their but style. You have your own cutting edge. But then so. I, yeah, and I tried, when I tried to like, you know, demonstrate their style, it just wasn't coming out right. So I had to kind of use a little bit of them and most of me because, it, it, and then it, it's just something that I, I, most people say, wow, I, I haven't heard that, 
that style. Yes. So you need to come up with your own. Gender, you, you know, you, you you've done that so well. You've done it in a brilliant fashion because I had an opportunity to listen to Child of the King. I've had an opportunity to listen to more. Than um, you do all of your own writing, of course. Yes. You have your own production studio. Your son is a is a hip hop artist. What is that like oh, working yeah. with your son being a hip hop because, artist and you know, working with your husband as well? It's a rubby, but that was that was good. Okay. He's always saying, "My, that, that's a little too plain. That's a little too plain. We got to put a little action into. You got to put a little hip hop in it." But it's good because a lot of my songs, especially the up tempo ones, came out real good with, with the little hip hop flavor to it. There's a unique story. I'm going to shift gears here a little bit because it just hit me uh, in, an, in an extemporaneous fashion. Your son and you have a, there's a story behind your son being a producer. Do you mind sharing that experience with the audience? Well, well, I got a book that's going to be coming out. It's called Covenant of the Heart. Covenant of the Heart. Yes, yeah, I'm doing my research very well. Covenant of the Heart. Right. And um, I was gone to, um, I, when I got pregnant with my son, I was on the road. And then when I, I decided that I didn't want that child because it was going to keep me from going overseas to uh, perform. And when I was going over to see to, cease to perform, mm -hmm. they said, well, you won't be able to go. And so I decided I'm going to abort this child. I, I don't want it because I don't want to mess up my career. Well, <laughs> to make a long story short, I could not abort that child after several times trying to do that. Um, he came, and not only did he come, he became he became a musical phenomenon in my life because he began to pick up the music. I, you know, I would take him to my uh, shows and stuff with me. He started picking up the music. He started playing on his own at the age of three. He just started playing every instrument he could, and next thing I knew, he was writing songs. That is such an amazing story. I was so touched by it. I'm so glad you had an opportunity to to expound upon that. What has that event been like, and how has it changed your relationship? with your son uh, producing your tracks and then your husband works well he's uh, doing the sound engineering with your with your company what is that that amalgamation like with all three of you guys working together oh, is that it's, hectic it's tight. Or, no it's or, tight what is that it's like? tight it's tight because my husband and my son we all get together and we get in the studio we might argue a little bit but mm -hmm. we get it done and it's and, and and my son is very talented he's very talented and he not only writes for me he writes for different um artists, hip hop, he does, he does most of everything. Well, you know what, I would love to go into a great detail in regards to Two Duck Productions because you guys are doing some phenomenal things with your production company, but more importantly, the reason for you being on the program today is because of so many things that you're doing, uh, Globy, you're doing some phenomenal things, not only as an evangelist, but also as a writer and as a producer, we've talked about that, but you, you've been doing film. So what has that been like? Stump the yard. Oh wow! I, I, I would don't just... get your hair cut at the Madison <laughs> Barbershop Dragon this Friday. Talk about that oh, experience yeah. and what is that like with you taking on those different hats? Right. I, I was really just I was more curious about how 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 would it be if you know if I got into a film to see just how it would feel. Mm -hmm. Um, I found out that it was very, very uh, strenuous and tiring. I was like, yes. I don't know if this is going to be for me. But I enjoyed what I did do. You know, I did when I did the, um, was an extra in the gospel, and then I went the extra in Stomp the Yard, and then I did another uh, uh, in independent film, yes. uh, which hasn't been released yet. So, I mean, I, I think. I just want to tell her thank you so much, Colby, for coming yeah. out. Suspense. Suspense.